Just entering here now. Here now. Duh. Well, isn't that suspicious? Let's go talk to Julius. Oh dear. This data nut contains some rather disturbing information. Of what variety? Yes has been building a diabolical machine. Okay. A machine capable of sucking the warm-bloodedness out of mammals. Yeah, we know that already. Turning it into reptiles. He's been doing that for a long time. Those are the buff-headed new lizards I've been seeing around the place. These warm-blooded uber lizards are bigger, stronger, and faster. Cass is making an unstoppable army so he could take over southern rivers yep. and eventually the world. But I can stand, like, Straight. against the army but alone. Cass going to need a lot of us mammals to make an army that big? Exactly. Which is why we need to move fast. What the... Maramudgy is under attack! They could have just bombed us before. Why didn't they why'd they wait? Luckily we just had these explosives sitting around. I want to go check. Look, he left a note. What does it say? Dear Ty. <laughs> There's still time to save him, mate. Go on, get cracking. With what? Oh, suddenly there's a plane there. Where was it? No one knows. Okay, let's go see if the entire population's actually gone or not. I guess they just figured you'd be like... Well, they're letting me continue, so... It's actually a really cool final level, and it's... And now we're back to just casual mu music. Everyone's gonna still be there, aren't they? Oh my god, they're actually gone! Wow! Oh-ho! I did not expect that. Sweet. Would have been nice if you had to like walk back, you came into here, and the entire town's gone, and you're like, what the hell's going on? And then you walked in, and then he'd like, they're like, oh my god, everyone's been kidnapped. That would have been amazing. I'm just not sure how they could have pulled that off. Because you can warp back to your main base like I did. But, anyways, let's start the last level. <sighs> Get the hang of doing that eventually. This is also like a Pokemon building. It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Let's do it, sir. Let's face off against that cad boss, Cass. Hey, wait up, possum. You're not leaving without me. Or me. It's time for me to pay back an old debt. Let's go blow shit up. And now, this is what the ramp was for. So you never really had a reason to fly anywhere before. Could have at least had the ship there waiting, being like, yeah, we'll eventually use this. Oh yeah, and we're not going in unarmed. She has, has an alt colored mech. Slight. Wow, yours is really <laughs> cool. What is it? It's a missile bunny. I built it myself. Who with a little help from Julie? So he's the artillery. Right here, chaps. We're over the drop zone. And it doesn't Prepare show you what you have. Whoa. What was that? And 
then it's just like, you look over. And it's like, oh my god, it's beautiful. Is that a shadow bunyip? It's like, Sounds oh my like god. You've got bunyip in be sly. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> That's tough I'll talk coming from the person too. who has an alt colored basic. Look out, incoming. This is the map. Also, I can jump like I'm on the moon, which is amazing. And I can double jump, which is amazing. It's literally just a power trip. It's like, this thing is awesome. Three thousand in one. I'm gonna club at you. What did I do? Oh, screw it. I don't care. I need to work on their accuracy. The only problem is you have to double jump like twice in a row. You can't like go jump jump because it just defaults to glide. I do kind of miss the slam in the regular, but. I know I misheard it, but it sounded like she called me a twat. Better not be artillery, thanks. I don't even need, really need to fight these guys. That laser's cool. Oh, I almost have 20k. Nice. So that's how big that outhouse is. It's easily twice the size of a regular one, if not three times. Suspicious area. Looks like Cass doesn't want us to leave. What in the world is that? It's Patchy. He's Boss Rush. <laughs> He'll be sore after we finish with him. That was bad, and you should feel bad. I realize he's bigger. Get crunk. Never learn, do ya? We must be getting closer. Let's move it. Not again. Boss rush. He doesn't really think he can stop us, does he? So luckily, we remade Buster. This time, he's ten times the size. I bet I can't rip out his core. Also, yes, they randomly bombard you. The nanites themselves are twice the size, too. Ah, 
Ow. Just get up, you big palooka. I know his entire job here is to stall, but... Fight me. Boop. some sort of secret. I don't know if this is worth it. There's nothing good in there, I don't think. I remember. I do remember doing this. I remember glitching through the top like that. Screw it. Crush the rabbits. Not real rabbits. I'll leave them next, I don't care. Because I'm kind of low on health. How are there guys there? I'm gonna really take these guys. Oh, thank you for letting me know that was there. Wonder if this is in Cassopolis or not. Whether this is like an off site base. Cassopolis is an island. It's not very big. Well then quit being useless. It's really not worth fighting these guys. Get off my range, guy. Melee scrubs. There hasn't been a lot of the mutants, so I guess they're already invading. Ah uh, yes, you dorks. No, 
No problem. Giant hole! And they dish their mechs somewhere, because they're idiots. No worries. So I was like, yep. What is it, Jezza? Be careful. Okay, possum? I'll be right. Hey, Shazza! See you around like a Rizzo. Let's go! I lost Super Mario 64 style. You just couldn't leave your little orange nose out of my business, could you? Nope. Blame yourself, Cass. You mess with me, mates, you mess with me. Actually, a really cool boss fight. I like it. He's like a mixture of like an improved Buster and like I don't know. That was phase one. He's fusing the floor. Uh, what? And he's half the size of the arena, too. Punch her right in the spine. He looks cool. Even if he does kind of suck. If I remember correctly, he has four phases. Too much damage, too much damage! Eject, eject! He's also a lava bender, because, you know. Can I stand up? I can't hit him with punches! He was literally waiting for me to hit him. He's like, come on, hit me then. He's like, nope, I'm out of here. Okay, that would have vaporized him. <laughs> Overkill. Ow! It's either Cass. You heard the man. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! It was all a bit of fun. Yes, permanently mutating people is fun. <laughs> you did that. Good money, and nice jackets. Fat chance, Cass. 
We're taking you in. Oh, it's just not fair. Oh, most unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, they have absolutely no idea that he's the one who actually built the machine. And, for extremely senseless acts of bravery, I am proud to present these medals made of the most exquisite thunder eggs to Sly, Shazza, and Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger. Are the thunder eggs like... Never mind. That's irrelevant. <laughs> Making him do community service in the actual prison. I don't know what these are. Are they putting opals in the crates? That's hilarious. Okay, so, what to say about this? I don't know if I'd say it's either better or worse than the first game, for starters. Because they're... they changed it up. Whereas, the first game was almost... I say almost, kind of like vaguely, a clone of Super Mario 64, which is great. It's... I love the style. This game changed it up and had, like more open world more collectibles I think and less of a strict level thing and more just explore the world and find what you find um, new weapons were really cool all the upgraded ranks were really awesome even though I only bought one but um, I did kinda miss having to actually get cogs to get like the new weapons and that kind of was a bit of a turnoff. Because being able to... Like, this first game, you'd pick up the cogs to unlock the new weapons, right? But here, you just buy weapons with cash. Which is okay. It's just, there's no... There's no reason to pick up all this stuff. Like, the missing people? Pointless. The cogs are pointless. The pontoons or whatever are, like... They're only useful in finding other things. So it's not really a big deal. The only thing that's really I really go out of my way to do is try and find Steve everywhere. Because it's just hilarious watching most of his cutscenes. And it's just like... He's just a goof and pays you a ridiculous amount of money. Um, characters were fine. They brought a lot of characters back from the first game, which is good. They actually made Fluffy a main, like a main antagonist, where in the first game it was, look, here's one second of this character, and then whatever. Um, Koala scientist. I liked the idea of Cassopolis, which gave you a reason to not just literally walk in there and just blow him to hell, because he has diplomatic immunity. But once he starts like kidnapping people, don't you just kind of like declare, okay, this is war. An act of, tr like, I'll consider that an act of war, and we're gonna go destroy you. But, of course, this isn't, like, a huge, like, a really mature game or whatever, so I'm not expecting stuff like that. Um, Bunyips were okay. They were a good addition that weren't, didn't feel, like, really forced. I wasn't a fun, wasn't fond of the thermal one. I like the idea of swimming through lava, but... I just kind of wish it was executed differently. Because on land, it's really bad. Lifter Bunyip should have walked faster when it wasn't carrying carrying something. Other than that, it was fine. You didn't use it much. Like, twice. Literally. It's kind of like... You could have at least had a third or fourth time. Thermo you used four times, I think. Without, like, counting the small ones. The tutorial area was really good. It was a good way of setting up the story as well as giving you the basic tips on how to play the game. Um, the game is really stingy on health, which I mentioned a lot, but 
It kind of makes it challenging. I died what? Once, not counting the beetle thing. So on the counting the beetle thing was like what three or four times. That's a bit of a pain. And the time I died was to actually pit myself, or I didn't pit myself. I fried myself. Um. One thing I did like is that not all of the people you help were all like, "Oh yeah, thanks a lot," and we're really happy. Like, the alien guy and that one chick were really like pissed off. Like. Even if you do like your best, they, they're still going to get mad at you, and it's really good because that's, like, realistic. People are going to be like that in real life. You can't expect everyone to be like, Oh, wow, thanks for the help. They'll complain and be a general dickbag. <laughs> um, in terms of the open world, like just driving around and stuff, it's alright. I kind of like the idea. The one thing I complain about is um, the mud. Like, honestly. Why have certain areas that just slow you down? It's just a giant pain in the ass. Um, past of that, I don't know what else there is to really say. The story is pretty good. Like, it's not like an epic story or whatever. It's just that. It's just kind of a conflict. Even though Cass basically has no pre. Well, he has a decent presence actually because of the cutscenes. So basically, every time you beat a boss, you basically get a cutscene showing what he's doing, what he's up to, and stuff. So it's not like it's just it was me the whole time, ha ha. You'd actually you got a kind of feel of how he was. One thing I didn't like is that um, there's plot inconsistencies. The fact that they had the giant mutant lizards already in the tutorial level when they hadn't even invented the machine until. Um, at least after the second boss. So, it just kind of doesn't really make sense. The game is a bit short. Probably did this in under 15 episodes, give or take, and that's around 20 minutes each. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I can say. It's different from the first game, but it stands out on its own as being good. It wasn't like they butchered it. It's like they tried something new and that actually worked. Um, three changes a lot and changes the atmosphere a lot, but it keeps pretty similar to the third to the second game. Um, I don't really have much else to say here. I used to play this game a lot when I was a kid. Like, a lot. If I was just bored, I'd be like, okay, let's just start the file over and see how far I can get without saving. I never once beat it in one sitting, but I remember getting close. I remember beating the third boss and not being able to beat the fourth. Not being able to get to the final boss and beat him in one sitting. So that kind of gives you an idea of how short the game is. It's kind of too bad, like... They could have put probably more content, made the map a bit bigger. Um, maybe added a fifth boss. It's making like four bosses and then the final. Which would have been nice. Um, maybe actually fight Carlos would be kind of cool. Instead of just him being like, yeah, I'm the scientist, whoop de doo Instead of essentially fighting Fluffy three times and then fighting Cass at the end. It's okay, I guess. The comedy is pretty good in this game, I've got to admit. Um, for being an E game and not being able to put do anything like risque, um, it is pretty good. Animations, fairly well. Um, graphics are good. Um, There's the one glitch that happened, but um, other than that, it seems perfectly fine. Never got glitched around, I don't think. Nothing that really stood out. Nothing game-breaking. Um. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know how much else I can say about this game. The kart racing isn't bad. I kind of feel like it's a pointless add-in. Like, if they had removed kart racing and added more content in the actual main game, I would have been probably happier. But the kart racing is decent. It's nothing nothing to sneeze at, but it's not, like, the greatest thing ever. 
It's not as good as like Mario Kart, but I wouldn't expect it to be. It's better than some racing games. <laughs> Even if the maps are kind of eh. None of them are really amazing. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. The soundtrack's ridiculously good as always. Um, they seem to do really good work on the sound. Like, all the, like, songs seem to fit their areas really well. Nothing seems out of place, and a lot of them are memorable. I think that's it. I don't really have much else to say, I don't think. I wouldn't want to go for 100% in this game. It'd be a lot of work, because everything's just scattered around, right? Whereas in like the first game or other games that are similar to it, it's like, here's the level, here's the list off of everything that's in it. That's another thing I kind of wish would happen. Is if the areas were kind of segregated, like in Jack and Daxter, where you'd walk into the area and be like, okay, I'm going to pop up the menu and be like, okay, this is all the stuff that's in this level. So you can like, figure out. Terrence. Tiberius. Lenny. Trader Bob. Trader Bob and Lenny were the same guy, really? I don't know who Karn is, but Red's the guy in the truck. Carlos, Duncan, and Snappy. Wow. Bluey. I don't know who Bluey is, but Rex, yeah. Parrot Beard? Bunny Belder was the narrator at the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Al and Fluffy were boys for the same person? That makes sense, actually. Additional character voices. Pretty sure the guy's name was Steve. The guy you stalk and get money from. I don't know. Yeah, he's a bit of a big part in the third game, but credits are act well, I guess they're doing the credits pretty slowly. Voice director for Australia? Interesting. Right, yeah, that was like in the first game they mentioned that. There was two, like, places. I don't know if there's, like, an extra cutscene at the end of this, which is why I'm kind of waiting. But I figured if there was, it would be for me getting 100%. Salami Studios. And I'm pretty sure this is either going to dump me to the main screen or dump me in front of the base. Yep. Yeah. So, that's Tyler Tasmanian Tiger 2 for you. Directed by Michael Bay.